Welcome everyone to this show today. We are very, very privileged to have Bruce, who's going to introduce himself. But as you can see from the title today, Canada Current Opportunities. But before we continue, we are going to have Bruce, who is on the ground in Canada. Okay, he's going to tell us. Right. Yeah, we need to know what is going on in Canada because we have delays. Some people made applications for visiting visa, student visa, and everything else. So we want to know that before we dive into the content of this uh, conversation today. And bear in mind, my friends, anyone that needs applications, of course, they have to go to Canada.ca. But having said that, we know that some of the clans want to do these things themselves, probably to save on cost, and that is where we come in. And of course, Bruce will be more than happy to be of assistance because he's on the ground. Okay, so Bruce, please introduce yourself to us. Thank you so much, Janet Rangi. Uh, I'm so excited to be here. Happy New Year, everybody. Uh, to the followers, to the people coming straight in the emails, Janet Rangi, kiss 67 at gmail.com. Uh, people that are coming on www.janetrangi.com, we really much appreciate the, the effort you're putting in and uh, the way you're coming out to invest in yourself. Rail, uh, my name is Bruce, uh, originally from Uganda. Um, Janet, I, I've been here, this is the second time I've been on the live, right? I must That's end, cool. I'm, in, I'm in the background, yeah? I'm in yeah. the background dealing with those applications, you know, it's a tedious process, but why not? We have to go through it because we started it and we're seeing the positive work on it, right? Uh, originally from Uganda, from Akari University and then uh, came to in, to the United States through the J1 program, still through Janet Rangi. And then after uh, I came to Canada and then right now I'm doing my postgrad in uh, data engineering, right? Isn't that interesting? Very well, nice. I'm so excited to uh, tell about these untold stories on the ground, right? We appreciate all people that come out to give information, but we also want to give us the on-ground information, what exactly it entails, what you need to do, you know, and how can we come up with these solutions together? Because we believe in Janetrangi, you learn how to do it yourself, right? In a way that we help you achieve what you want, but even you get the knowledge of how to do it. Is that interesting? That is very true, Bruce. And you are a true example. You just reminded me, you know, I remember, was it 2017 when I, you first watched my video and you are just somewhere in Uganda and you came across my post and you followed everything I was saying and you ended up- Absolutely, yeah. And you know what, when you came to the United States, I remember you called me and you had like two other roommates. And then who came through, <laughs> Janet Rangi. And then you went to Canada and you met a lot. <laughs> Janet, you're everywhere. I mean, it's, it's a small world, right? Yes. Yeah, it's still yeah. an interesting journey. Uh, but we also want to pass out that positivity to the other folks that are wanting to better themselves. We have lots of nurses, care aides. We have lots of engineers. We have a lot of data scientists. We have a lot of uh, teachers. But okay. they don't know that they are really in demand in this country, right? I'm excited to tell them about all this. And before we even dive into the opportunities, as you said, you know, all these things going on. But before you go in there, can we know what is going on in Canada? Because we know there are some people, even some of the clients or some people who've done applications on their own or used agents, used lawyers, they are just seeing all these delays and they don't know what to do. And they I'm haven't got regret, they haven't gotten any feedback. But they have accounts. They know everything is genuine. Everything has been done the right way. So what can you tell us and what is uh, the hope on the ground? Well, um... I'm glad you asked that because it's putting lots of people in that kind of situation of what's really happening, you know? And uh, according to, uh, to the news, what's happening right now, honestly, there is lots of backlog, right? But guess what? The good thing is on the in the recent immigration news that we had, they had 1,800 uh, new uh, processing officers, right? So the hiring process, you get hired, but you have to go through uh, practice or you have to go through the training, right? So we literally know these people are under training and they're going to put their hands on those applications, you know? And okay. there is another news that came out uh, a fortnight before uh, about how they want to waive some requirements to first 
to fasten the process of our uh, their they call the um, temporary resident visas, whether it's student visas, uh, visitor visas, and so on and so forth, right? So okay. what I'm so really telling you, you are being requirements. when you say waive requirements, what do you mean? What kind okay. of oh glad you asked about that. So waiving it's literally are trying to soften or to ease some requirements. For example, if they say that somebody coming for are uh, a student visa they need to have like uh fifty thousand maybe in their account so if they say we're gonna waive that requirement they're gonna mind about hey if this person is able to get a school to admit them the fact that they're allowed to work unlimited hours in the uh, when to get the, when they get into the country they know that they're gonna be able to make money to pay for themselves right so if they say hey we're doing away that kind of requirement it means they are softening their uh, process for people to get in right yeah but just that's an example, right? Yeah. yeah. So this is happening in the visitor visa uh, processing, right? So do you think about... it's going to be better for people who are already lined up and waiting for a response? Or what do you think? Or this will be new applications? That's a great question. So okay. in the highlight, they say it's going to happen to, it's going to be considered in clients that are putting the applications are from, okay. People that put in the applications from 2020 should be the last application that were lodged in 2022 December and downwards. That's the cap because they're trying to narrow down to a 500 500,000 applications. They're trying to process those pretty quick. You understand? Mm -hmm. Which we're really paying hard for that. You know? Yes. It's something that immigration has in our announced out but uh one of the news our uh, platform here say that they had that with uh one of the officials in ottawa where the immigration office is at right mm -hmm. so we excited and we know they're really doing their hands doing their best putting their hands on it to see that they really soften uh the the backlogs because every time literally ever since we uh, ever since we started this video seven minutes almost 500 applications have been submitted, right? So the backlog mm -hmm. keeps on growing and growing and growing. But I'm excited to tell them about the current opportunities about, about Canada. Okay. Where but, which they are uh, what you're saying, let's not give up hope for those who are waiting, uh, so long as the right thing was done. And I've seen even some people who Absolutely, have gone yeah. ahead and, you know, requested, like, oh, hey, what is happening? You know, they will still give you the same answer. So just know you are not alone, okay? When That's you right. are making the application i mean these things were hopeful they would tell you okay 30 days we'll process you or sometimes they would say three months we'll process you but yep. apparently the whole world was also in there so yeah be patient and then at some point some decision will have to be made whether to wait on canada or look for any other fresh opportunities but what we want to tell people that so long as you have an account and you can verify that information everything was done correctly to the book Okay, so all right, so patience. So let's dive into these current opportunities. Wow, yeah, my excitement, my excitement is starting from here. Yeah, well, um, the first place I want to start with the top arm um, in demand are uh, uh, recruitments that are happening or uh, internationally. They're trying to really uh, broaden the scope in the way that they get these in demand occupations in different provinces. It's like every province is fighting for for their life, right? So to start with, we have our, a new one that started in BC and they are prioritizing uh, nurses, right? Nurses, care aides, uh, nurse aides, and then it's coming in in a way that they are waiving the requirements. So nurses have to pay a certain fee to get into the pool, but right now it's being waived, you know? It's being eliminated for them to get into the pool because they want them as quick as today, as quick as tomorrow, right? Yes. And then stuff like the, they had to do like an exam mm -hmm. or do like a, a verification with a, with NAS. That's the nursing body that uh, is responsible for all international trained nurses into the country. Uh, they also say that we're waiving that. Isn't oh, okay. that, is, isn't that yeah. amazing? That is what takes usually time is to go through the verification process. Absolutely, it takes. Okay, so that's gonna save us time if you are not listening. That's right. Your that's time in BC. 
that's in BC, that's British Columbia, okay. and that's where I reside. British Columbia. Okay, okay. Yeah. And um, so having said that, are you trying to say um, the nurses now, they can start the application and maybe their time will be short? Can't Absolutely, you? but you gotta you got to take this serious. They have this kind of uh, requirements they need from you. They need your English proficiency tests. That's okay. the trial, right? Mm -hmm. You need to have that handy. Okay. And then at least you need to have your West, right? Mm -hmm. To show that, hey, I have my bachelor's degree from Kenyatta University, Macquarie University, Nairobi University, and it's right here, you know? Mm -hmm. And it's not specific to any country internationally. Okay. Are, are you so in when you are talking of these opportunities, yeah, these ones are not waiting. Okay, the ones that are experiencing a lot of backlog with no responses are usually temporary visas, the student visas and visiting. Oh, on this other side, we are talking about a PR. Is that these are permanent? Yeah, these are permanent. Uh, these are permanent requirements. Are well, they experiencing right? backlogs too? Just to be honest, for, you know, the clients so they know to make no, the difference. This one's the fact that these ones are really in demand. Mm -hmm. On the portrait, it's like they will take three months to get back to you. But honestly, if you log in your application right now. Within a couple of weeks, they're going to be like, hey, let's go to the next step because they really need you. And what's interesting about this kind of programs, you're allowed to come with your family. You're allowed to come or with a, if you're married, you have to come with your family and then your family have uh, also access to, to your, because you're the main applicant. When you get a permanent residency, your kid gets a permanent residency, your husband gets a permanent residency, right? Which is extreme, which is really interesting, right? Yes. Um, yeah, they're allowed to work, they're allowed to go to school for free, right? Yeah. And then there are even there's even what they call a sign-on bonus, right? Yeah. There's even called there's something called even the travel, um, they're given the travel the travel incentive, right? Mm -hmm. So air ticket stuff like that. It it, it, will, it will depend how lucky you will be, but honestly, if you get a company or if they really get you into the pool and then you show them that hey, this is missing. The fact that they have waived all the other uh, uh, fees, they are willing to help you out to be on ground. Okay. And, and so, from what I'm listening from you, first of all, the people who have waived this uh, province that has waived is uh, British Columbia. First of all, okay, Correct. all right. So that is something we can target. But number two, if you can just list quickly on-demand the uh, profession, so that people when they are listening to the video, they just don't think of an us. I want to do because I know personally we've helped a lab technologies and even them we, we they responded like within less than two weeks. Yeah. You know, so please expand that list so that we can have a wide audience of listeners so they can feel like even them they have an opportunity. Do That's you right. see the on demand opportunities there in British Columbia I mean, and also in other provinces? I think honestly, it's every province, but Okay. To be let me to be uh, exact on British Columbia, they're interested in civil engineers, telecom engineers, data engineers, software developers, early childhood uh, tutors, interested in uh, uh, mechanics, uh, diesel mechanics, uh, truck drivers, right? Mm -hmm. It's a whole round of lists, but the fact that we have that are are appointment you can book an appointment okay and get my information about that mm -hmm. it's a whole list right okay because every sector mm -hmm. every sector is lacking labor right down okay. here so in other words is janet rangi 67 at gmail.com and just say i want the opportunities from bruce and just when we set up the opportunity this is why consultations are very important is to see what you have and once we see what you have is to place you somewhere because these videos are too general I do consultations. Now I've come to respect those consultations. Number one, they bring that person who is serious. Number two, it just streamlines the, the noise. You know, you can listen to all these, uh, you know, videos on social and everywhere else. But until it comes to you and the action you need to take, it's just noise. And that is why we provide. So if you want to speak with Bruce, of course, you'll find us. Janet Rangi, 67 at gmail.com. Janet Rangi.com is our consultation. Okay, Bruce, continue. So now we know that it's a wide variety of people who are listening. It's no longer right. just nurse. It's just not that lab technologist. It could be you listening to this. But the only way for you to know sometimes is to book that consultation and we make an assessment for you. Okay? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. All right, Bruce. And another interesting news that is coming up 
are uh, in the continent of Africa, definitely. We have uh, the New Brunswick is having uh, recruitment events that are happening in Africa this year. Wow. Yeah. yeah wait. I want to go. <laughs> well, everybody in Africa, what I'm going to tell you. We call it the sunshine continent. Definitely. The sunshine because continent. We call it the sunshine continent. They see bright people. They see smart people, university educated people like us. You know, yep. sometimes when they say Africa, some, some people just have a strange way of looking at us. Guys, it's us. Very capable, good communication skills, command of the English language, command of the French language. Okay? All right. right. So tell us more. Where are they coming to the Sunshine Continent? Which Well, which? well, they're going to be in Dhaka. Okay. Dhaka, that's, Dhaka, that's, in, that's in Senegal. Uh-huh. Yeah. And then they're going to be in Morocco. Okay. And then they're going to be in Cote d'Ivoire in Abidjan. Okay. Yeah, they're going to be in those three cities this those year. Those are French-speaking. Yeah. I think you said also Cameroon. Uh, no, it should, no, it should be Dakar, Morocco, and, uh, and Abidjan, right? Hey, that's and Ivory Coast. Cote d'Ivoire. Mm -hmm. Cote d'Ivoire. Mm -hmm. So what can we do about this? The Sunshine question, people. Hey, okay. get the requirements of getting to... At Senegal, get the comments of getting to Morocco. Some places are visa free. Mm -hmm. Why don't you go and sign up for this and make sure that you go mm -hmm. when the employers come from New Brunswick to Morocco? They're there for you. How about that? Okay. So, anyone you know? who is interested, write to us an email and then you know, book a consultation with Bruce and then he directs you to those events. Yeah. Yeah. This yeah. time we are very practical, no more talking stories. You know, our team, if you didn't know, Janet Rang and Bruce are one team. We don't speak. We do actions. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we have those uh, recruitment events that are really coming up. And we've had good success with stories about uh, the recruitment uh, events that are happening in different uh, from different uh, provinces. That's also amazing. And people from our sanction company, we should, we should take it on, right? Because mm -hmm. they're targeting us. Oh, people that are, uh, that are targeted in this kind of uh, events are NAS aides, uh, nurses, uh, uh, mechanics. I mean, the list is long, right? But it's better to come to us or see how best you can make research on that. You know, it's, mm -hmm. this is just a hint. You know, if we saying everything, we're gonna spend like five hours here, yeah. which yeah. which won't be really. It, we don't have that right now. Yeah. yeah. The goal uh, is to expose them to opportunities to think higher and know that you don't have to just be staying home. There are many things happening around the world. You know, and of course we love home. And once you come here, you're able to finance yourself, have some money in the pocket, and go do stuff at home also. You know, you need that financial ability to do things. Yeah. Why not? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Another interesting thing uh in New Brunswick still, uh they've come out with four uh, main companies that are really hiring, right? And uh, to be able to get into these kind of roles, mostly the jobs that are open right now are for people that work on, on seas, like fishermen, stuff like that. And you have lots of people that are working on there, right? But I give you one quick trick. If you have some uh, education, knowledge about that, make sure it's one year plus and you can prove it, right? Make sure you have your English, right? Your mm -hmm. English. And the minimum is only a four percent. A four. A, a, wow. They need only four points, right? Oh, four that points is on IELTS. Yeah, the ban. Yeah, the ban. The four. The four. You know, the ban four for for you to qualify for that. That's so low, right? Yes. So yes that's as long low. as you can prove that and you have high school, opportunities mm -hmm. are open for you, right? Yes. Um, so for those who are listening to us for the first time, probably this is too much terminology. But what Bruce is trying to say is good for us to have requirements. That could be edu education, high school. It could be a college degree. It could be university and PhD. But on top of that, you have to register with IELTS. IELTS is an English exam. And it usually it has a testing on comprehension, on listening skills, on writing skills, and I think something else, spoken. Spoken, writing, listening, and something else. But there are usually four. And usually the high ones, people score very well. They score 7.58 to enter things like the express entry. But what Bruce is saying, if you have a low score, these provinces can consider you. Number two Absolutely is to evaluate right. your documents. And your documents have to be evaluated by a 
uh, organizations in North America, Canada and America, common one ways, world education services, where you will send your university education or your college education, they will evaluate and compare that to the Canadian system and tell them, Canada, this is the GPA, this is the equivalence. And then that way, they can easily know who you are and tell them the command of the English language. Those in Dakar, as you said, you know, Senegal, those in Cote d'Ivoire, all those people probably they're looking at French because Canada has uh, French speaking uh, provinces and English provinces. So I thought I had to expand on that. So well that explained, yeah. Oh, what? Well explained, yeah, you did the train okay. for sure. All right, you can continue. Well, yeah. Um, so, New Brunswick, I'll, I'll say another hidden fact about New Brunswick actually before we, we move to another uh, interesting topic in another province. People that are looking forward to advancing their education, you already have like a bachelor's. New Brunswick is one of this, well, the province that we have special schools that are having the lowest tuition in Canada. The lowest tuition in Canada. So okay. if you want to know, you want to advance, you have a maybe a bachelor, uh, a bachelor's in a certain uh, discipline and you want to advance to a postgrad or something, hey, why don't you hit us? Uh, come into our consultations, come into the emails. I'll give you my information about that. And maybe you yeah. can use the student route, right? Because it's so yeah. cheap, yeah. right? Yeah. You can yeah. imagine the whole semester paying 4000 and even lower than that, you know? So that's another opportunity for people that are interested into getting into the country, come do school, graduate, to go for a postgraduate work permit. After postgraduate, uh, postgraduate work permit, enter into express entry through the uh, Canadian experience class and then go get invited, get your ITA and then apply for PR. How about that? Mm -hmm. So you you're come with family, education. Yeah? education is a pathway in Canada and what you're saying in New Brunswick, uh, the tuition is on the lower end. That's so right. An opportunity for those who want to come in as students. Okay. That's right. So there are many opportunities as students and also permanent residency, which they call it PR. There is the green card, like some of us here. I forgot to ask you, which city are you in? Oh, I'm in Vancouver, actually. Oh, Vancouver, Canada. Okay. Yeah. All right. And me, I'm in Texas, the United States. We forgot to tell them. So we are speaking from... Oh, <laughs> wow. Yeah. Okay. So continue, Bruce. So we've talked about those opportunities, on-demand occupations. Those ones are moving very one. quick. Yeah. yeah. So, and you said they, like nurses, they are waiving fees, but most importantly, they are waiving that waiting period. That's and right. I, I can attest to that, Bruce. When it came to lab technologies, those who have requirements, we had immediately. But now, after they give you PR, now there's time for them now to verify information. Yep. At least you have the permanent residency in your pocket. It happens within three or four weeks. As long as you're ready with the requirements. Yeah, yeah, with the English, it. especially the IELTS and the evaluating the documents. Through How about we tell them that we also have like a very, very organized way of making our clients qualify to get the higher grades into the IELTS. We have an, our IELTS, we have a professional IELTS teacher. Mm -hmm. one. She mm -hmm. has a C in English, right? Mm -hmm. In that category, C is the highest, right? So she has a C in English, she's been training our clients and then they've been progressing, right? You have to be I'll, I'll make a disclaimer, honestly, mm. or I'll make a very strong point here. You have to be, you have to be resilient, right? You have mm. to be a very, very, very effective in what you want. If this person is going to call you like at your midnight, hey, you're trying to work for something that's going to change the entire life. You know what I call this? I call this a $1 billion project. Mm. And mm -hmm. it, indeed it is. This it is. is a $1 billion project. That's mm -hmm. gonna change the entire entire generation. Correct. So why not wake up and mm -hmm. hit it right? Yes. So, honestly, we have someone on board that is gonna help you. So we're making sure that we have all we have a compounded package that is gonna make you succeed. And that's we what I like about team. our team. We look at world class standards and we apply the same standards to our people. So I know sometimes we receive clients who are cavalier in our attitude. They want to do things the old way. And we are like, no, wake up. You have to raise your standards. We have to match everyone else. And in fact, be better than anyone else. That one I can say. So when someone comes with IELTS, sometimes they want to do themselves. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That is okay. 
But our goal is to make sure you perform well. You understand? Right. Uh, yeah. So there is no way of taking shortcuts. I know sometimes it takes time. You have to be patient. Um, just to walk through the correct steps. And when things happen, they happen the right way. We know sometimes, you know, embassy can be challenging. And that is why Bruce is coming with more opportunities that actually provide PR. You know, sometimes if you know there's a problem here, you come with a solution on the other end. Yeah. So thank you, Bruce, about that. Thank you so much, Sam. Yeah, uh, another another province we're going to dive in, it's, it's my neighbor, actually. We're going to go to the province called Alberta, right? So a little bit about Alberta, right? It's mm -hmm. uh, since 19, for the last 37, 40 years, it has hit our population as spiked. It has gotten more 20,000 people. What does that mean? Because it's, it's cheap and it's easing immigration routes, right? Mm -hmm. Like one that is really latest. They are trying to, they opened up an expedited process for internationally trained doctors. Isn't that amazing? Amazing. Okay. It's amazing. Yes, yes. It's amazing. Talk more about that because there are doctors who follow me. And they okay. Listen. So when you talk about doctors, we're talking about doctors. Right now, doctors, the, uh, the only four countries that are targeted. If you trained or if you did, had your education in United States, Australia, United Kingdom, Ireland, Mm -hmm. Right now, that's the doctors that are open for. Mm -hmm. But for some specialties in health, in health, in healthcare, South Africa is one of them. Hong Kong is one of them. Some specialties. Hey, why don't you come and book in a consultation and unfold more of this, right? Mm -hmm. But it has opened up that. Okay, so that it sounds like it's open to some people as usual, which is disappointing. But that's okay. You yes, never but you still have the followers in us, right? Yeah, I have no followers in all those countries. But you know, we are the we are the leaders of today. We are kind of opening opportunities because before we never used to speak and people didn't know us. But the more we speak, as you said, now you see people are now going back home to the Sunshine Continent and now realizing they have to recruit there. And so we just have to keep on pressing and pressing. Yeah. So you I just had to point that one opportunity for doctors to make sure, you know, some of us are represented. For sure. Yeah. In the countries, yeah, because we have people from the Sunshine Continent who trained in those countries, uh, but they are more likely doing well anyway, so I don't know if they will use that program. Uh, any other country that you think off your head that can benefit from that? I mean, right now, you know, when it starts to open, okay, it's about to widen. So Widen, exactly. Why don't you... Well, I'm why, thinking why, someone is doing well in Australia, why are they coming to Canada, surely? I, I mean, I mean, it's, it's well, still... Then for themselves yeah there are people that are targeting maybe this has been their dream it was getting yeah. the other one on merit but i have a dream you okay. know what i mean so yeah. mm. we have all that kind of uh plants or uh, followers that are looking close yeah. to that yeah another interesting thing in alberta they have what they call their uh it's a prevention I mean, program that is interested in tech people mm -hmm. we have young software developers in science and continent uh, we have people that have done uh, data science. We have people that have done machine learning. There are a lot of people that have done computer science. All that, you know, people that have done um, uh, statistics, you know, they're all needed in this uh, Alberta. Uh, uh, it's a tech, a PNP, provisional mean program. Um, so if you're there and you think you are, you have a one year experience and you can prove that on paper, right? And then you have your IELTS, your English proficiency ready, or you, you can get started on that. Mm -hmm. And then you get into the pool and you get selected, right? I would say the process is a long process, it's a tedious process, but we're here to solve that, right? We have to solve that, yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's an opportunity for people out there that are in tech. We know tech is really leading, you know, it's going to give you a very, very high uh, mileage and onto your career, you know, which yeah. is awesome. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. So, mm -hmm. yes, uh, another opportunity still we have uh, in the province, I'll go to the province, I'll go to the, to Saskatchewan. Okay. Saskatchewan is so interesting, right? 
so interesting. So Saskatchewan has in demand, uh, in demand uh, mm -hmm. occupations in uh, people like the lab technicians, right? Yes. The birthday scientists, you know, occupation therapists. But I have a very, very strong point to talk about the occupation therapists. Yes. Occupation therapists, to, because it's a regulated uh, occupation right here. So you have to make sure that you have attained a bachelor's degree from an international, international bachelor's degree to be able to go into this kind of pool, right? Yes. Or if you have a diploma, hey, why don't you go back and enroll into a bachelor's? Mm -hmm. You know? It's about preparation. It's about, it's about preparation. preparation. And if there's anything people are learning as we go, at first when we started doing these things, people just jump. Oh, opportunity, opportunity. But sometimes what it means is these opportunities are here. How can I put myself in a winning position? Like today I was doing a video and I was saying, I gave them an example of a lady who called me and she said, Janet, I'm 50 years old. And I yep. wish I knew when I was 25. I said, why do you say that? And she said, you know, when I was 26, 27, or I think she said 28 years old or 30, she had friends mm -hmm. who had trained diploma in nursing and they came to the United States. But that time she was going to plan to go for master's. She's like, now that I'm listening to you and I'm 50 years old, if I knew what I knew then, I would not have gone for that master's. I would have enrolled myself in a diploma in nursing. And by after three years, I would have come to the United States. You understand? So we are teaching people, like, look ahead. What are you investing yourself into? As you said, you have a diploma in uh, occupational health. You know they need people with degrees. These opportunities don't just wipe themselves away that quick. So it's good you prepare yourself going to that degree, as uh, Bruce said, and then you'll qualify. So it's about instead of, you know, probably jumping from one field to another, just understand if I put my money, if I put my time, what is the return on investment? Yeah. So I like that part, Bruce. Yeah. That's great. Keep That's on great. going. So you've said occupational therapies, they have to have a bachelor's degree. Absolutely. Yeah. Lab technologies. A, a diploma is good. Okay. All right. That's interesting. Yep. I wish we, we had on demand, you know, there's a long list. That's why they need to come for consultation. I mean, it's a long, it's a long list. It's a really long list. Cause yeah, give us a, yeah, that's continuing the caregivers. Answer. Yeah. Uh, there are a lot mm -hmm. of uh, opportunities that are really opened up. So it's unskilled and skilled labor. Of course. Yeah. Okay, will so, these people bring their families? Absolutely. Their families actually it, it was legalized on the 6th of November uh, that all people that come on work permits are allowed to come in with their... With their if you have a, a dependent child who is above 18, they're allowed to come in with you and they also get a work permit, right? That's if, the cut point for the children. I didn't understand that. I mean, there is kind of category whereby you are going to just get a job and then come on a work permit. And there is a route where you're going to come as a PR, right? So if you are selected to come in as a work permit holder, your family is also allowed to get the work permit and come in and get free education if they are under, if they're still, if they're still under 18 and they go to high school, right? Yeah. Because here they're starting working at age is 16. So they're allowed to start working, but you're the principal applicant that they're coming on you, which is really interesting. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. If you can Another talk big... about the timelines. Okay, go ahead. About No, I want to unfold that. What's that? I wanted to know about the timelines because if someone picks the opportunity, they want to know, okay, how long will it take me to get in there? And say, secondly, if I come alone and I'm married, when will my spouse join me? When will my children uh, join me? Inter interesting question. Mm -hmm. Now, when you are the principal applicant, you have to measure all your dependents. At the word go, the first time when you're making the application. Absolutely right. You can that never add them in after you yeah. approve. It will be, you can add them in, but it's going to be a really, really long process. Yeah. Or sometimes going to be like, why didn't you, you know? Mm -hmm. They don't want, they are trying to do everything to make sure you're not frauding the system. You yes. Know? So um, in that way, they're allowed to come in. Even if they don't come in, 
being uh, approved for PR by the time approved. Mm -hmm. Understand? Yes. Which is, which is a good point. But remember, if you have a PR or a permanent residence, you cannot stay in another country for more than six months. You know? Yes, that is yeah. true. What's okay. interesting about this, you come in as a permanent residence, after three years, you're eligible to apply for citizenship. Isn't that interesting? Interesting, very nice. Mm -hmm. That's really interesting. Yeah, yeah. And the only, uh, maybe I would say, the only thing a permanent president can do is only vote. Mm -hmm. But other mm -hmm. things, you are on the same line with the citizen. Yeah. Yeah. So it's really a good uh, timing for people that are really looking for the best way to start 2023 in, the, in a better position and see themselves uh, get to to big to, you know, to, to big uh, places of their lives, right? Because this mm -hmm. is really a life-changing uh, opportunity for yeah. other people out there. Um, so I want to give a, a short highlight about, uh, we've had lots of clients saying, hey, we're seeing our jobs opening up, right? Ah, mm -hmm. uh, fuck us. We're seeing um, maybe um, um, dairy, dairy, dairy milkers. I mean, I think I can do that. You know, yeah. Why don't you apply for me for that? You know, yeah. I've always been honest and told you the truth is the processing times for our permit from my account from the sunshine continent they are longer than places like the neighboring here, yeah, like Mexico, Ecuador, Brazil, right? Yes. They are longer, right? And what's the way to get these jobs? Now we're talking about people that have international experience. Mm -hmm. The people that have done their apprenticeships in the United States. Yeah. In agriculture, people that have done uh, training in uh, Israel, people that have done training maybe in Denmark. If you submit in your resume like that, these people will know that you have the international experience they're looking for, right? Mm -hmm. They'll be able to hold on you and put you in because they know you have, if you can prove that, right? How do you prove that? Your visa has your uh, completion certificates and stuff like that. That's how you're going to be able to compete with people that are closer yeah. and have our uh, shortest processing times. Yeah. So you should put that. They will not get back to you or it will be really hard. I'm not saying it's impossible, but I'm making sure that I show you the reality or the processes and mm -hmm. An employer is not going to wait for somebody for their work permit to process for 18 months or eight months when someone of two weeks is on there and they can do the same work, right? But right. if you have that international experience, put it down on the resume, right? And then we have what they call the ATS here. It, uh, it scans, it scans mm -hmm. the uh, CVs or the resumes for a client. So okay. make sure anytime you're trying to apply for any job, make sure you've Canadianized your, yeah. your resume should be in a Canadian format. You have to have the keywords, I say. In fact, exactly. there's a time though are using AI artificial intelligence to that's, that's that's the thing they use that. That's the ATS, yeah. right? They use that. You can tell the keywords, so it's important to know what to do, you know. And um that's why I always say people who find the experts usually have a better chance. It's just that it's taking too long for them to respond. But, you know, to be quite honest, uh, sometimes taking matters in your hands, might you need help. You either pay the lawyers and all those people a lot of money or you do yourself. And when you do yourself, what can you do is to, re to recruit people who can help you. Yeah. Like Bruce. Okay, we can help them. Help you. Rangi67 at gmail.com because sometimes they join me in the middle of the video and they don't know, like, where where is the link? Janet Rangi67 at gmail.com. And I also leave the link to my website so they can find all the information they need. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. So, another, uh, I, I talked about Saskatchewan, how they much in need of uh, not only lab technicians, uh, people like uh, mechanics. People like teachers, truck drivers, so, tutors, yeah, psychologists. Psychologists. Mm -hmm. Ah, yeah, yes. all these are really, really needed in these places. Mm -hmm. And it's going to be what's interesting that you get paid the same. Social workers, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. social workers, much, much in demand. Mm -hmm. You get paid the same as people here, right? That's really fair and interesting. Yeah, yeah. Then uh, I have another point to make on uh, 
Saskatchewan actually. Uh, Saskatchewan also has a low, they have low standards, uh, low standards of living, right? Mm -hmm. It's cheaper. It's really cheaper, right? Living mm -hmm. there. The rates are really low and houses are really cheap. So anyone can afford being living there. Even if you're an I'm immigrant, right? Mm -hmm. Getting like a two bedroom apartment, it would take you like 1200, right? Yes. Or even lesser than that, you know, if you're starting like maybe in a moderate kind of, but you're going to be able to make a life, which is really good. Um, yeah. We talk about have a subsidies. You're coming as a PR, have a subsidies, uh, um, child care incentive that is given up ten dollars a day, right? Which is really great. So you have all these opportunities and a support system that is going to pump you up until you're on your foot, right? Correct. Which really appreciate on that. Um, another province who want to go to go to the territories of uh, Newfoundland and Labrador, Newfoundland and Labrador. So every province seems to be having something special. Oh Everybody's awesome. just they're just opening up their, their yeah. hands mm -hmm. to bringing people. Yeah. yeah. And again, these are PR, permanent residency opportunities. That's so right. So they are not necessarily going to work with a backlog that is on the temporary side. No. Nope. It's good for people to understand that they, when it comes to PR, they, they communicate. Yes. The process yeah. is faster than, I mean, because they want to, get you in it is as, there. Empl employers need people to work economies are depending on and things have changed after the, 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 the what happened you know in 2020 yep you know it's not easy to find people either so you know people that used to come from all over the world is no longer a, a luxury for people just to show up yeah so that is the next province you're talking about what is special in that province Bruce? yo newfoundland or Bordeaux, it also has a um Cost of living are really low, right? Mm -hmm. They're really low. Um, and then they are also having these expedited uh, processes. Because in the first place, it's one of the, I wouldn't say isolated, but it's far away from others, right? So mm -hmm. in this case, it has, it's fighting so hard to see that it's also being competitive down there, mm -hmm. right? So, yeah. and a lo lot of people wouldn't take it up, but I, I would tell anybody, because they have an agreement, if you want to immigrate there, you sign a two-year contract to live there for two years before you try to move to another place, right? Okay, so they need to keep you because they brought you. Exactly. Okay. So we have some story, we had some story that people try to corrupt the system. They leave an address there and then go work another one. The system will watch you here. You, someone did it and they they were not their pr application was denied so hey let's make sure that we do the right thing correct when you go into that so it has also uh, a wide um a wide number of uh or careers or uh, uh opportunities the the career opportunities that are open there um from people from general labor farm workers um how they call this people um, so this is the greenhouse labor. yeah greenhouse greenhouse workers and generally. make sure that you can prove this on paper i really emphasize that make sure that i can prove this on paper there's no way you're gonna have someone one-on-one -on -one and explain to them you have to make sure yeah you it's have good to be to use right. what you have because i i like using stories bruce and i think we have a few minutes left but yep. the reason it's good for you to prove these things, again, I had a follower who told me she works on a cruise. And some people just come and then they say they have experience in maybe cooking. You understand? Or this, uh, being a chef. Being a chef on a ship is a good, good job. You really know, you really need to know how to cook. So once they recruit you and you go there and you don't even know how to do an omelette, it doesn't look good on your country. So what they're going to do, they're going to just stop taking people from your country. But what is exciting, Bruce, me and you now that we are a team and, you know, if people did know we are a big team, is to introduce people to a way of doing things the right way. If you do things the right way, there is always an opportunity and you will always maintain the respect. And That's dignity. Right. Yeah. So they need to have a good resume and actually be able to demonstrate those skills. They even people who ask for scholarships just because they can run. And then when they show up at the school, they can't run. 
So some things we really have to be careful, okay? So just no everyone can qualify in these programs, but we need to be very, very close to what we are asking for on the resumes. Yeah, so Bruce, any other things you said? I saw nurses, I've seen different provinces, Alberta, New Brunswick, uh, Saskatchewan, and this one, Labrador, you see? Hey, yeah, New Zealand and Labrador. And then we have, yeah, we even have Ontario. It has a, a, a PNP that is really active every month. Okay. They're really inviting mm -hmm. people, right? Yeah. From teachers, from nurses. I mean, it's not only about nurses, because I'm repeating this, nurses and wife. Yeah. But it's a whole chunk of opportunities. The world has opened to everybody, honestly. Yes. If honestly. you look, you can fit somewhere. Gone are the days where it's just nursing, nursing. By the way, so nursing has even become, <laughs> the demand has even now tripled or quadrupled. It's worse than where it was. But still, other professions now are really, really needed, both in Canada and the United States. But today we are just talking about Canada. Canada. Yeah. Janet Rangi, 67 at gmail.com if you need Bruce. Okay? Yeah. All right, Bruce, what can you say? Are you, are you ready for the closing statement or you had a lot to say? No, well, we still have a lot to say in the emails when you come to us. That's what I would say. Yes. It's so interesting to see you, Bruce, there. If people really want to know that these dreams really come true, is to look at both of us. I was somewhere just like the people listening to me, and I'm here. Bruce in 2017 was watching just the way we are watching today. That's right. Look at it, Bruce. I love your house. Thank you. It's, it has very beautiful windows. Is I that love you too. Dress? I love the... Is that yeah, a, yes, it is. <laughs> yes, I love how it looks. You know, you're living a dream, you know. <laughs> yeah, you're yeah. exactly, exactly. Yes, yes. And, you know, you are in Uganda, Makerere. I love when I say Makerere. Bruce was in Makerere. Makerere, okay. yeah. And when Bruce was in America, he used to call me. Hey, Janet, Janet, now look at it. <laughs> then he went to Canada without telling me. No, you told me, Bruce. You I did. Me. Come on. Yeah. Why not? And then you found so many friends in Canada who are saying, Janet, Janet, I came to Canada through Janet Rangi. So it's good to see, honestly, the fruits of our labor. It's good to see that families are changing. At the bottom of everything, for me, Bruce, I'll speak for myself. It's about providing service and seeing change and giving people that love and hope. You understand? We just, our team, we have a culture of kindness. We have a culture of love. We have a culture of just trying our best to provide service. Of course, in the end, honestly, we, we are also here in this uh, North America. Our time is extremely important. So we will give free information for people to utilize. But for people to come now into the details and have something tailor-made, personalized, customized, then that is the time they need this consultation. Okay, in this issue, if you want anything to do with Canada, Janet Rangi, 67 at gmail.com. Of course, we we'll connect you to Bruce. That is what you need to do. But yes. all about it's all about service and changing people's lives. Bruce? Another hint is everybody looking for us to apply for student visa. Uh, maybe, uh, maybe someone wants to come like for a family package, want to visit, go to Niagara Falls, go to uh, Banff in Alberta, Extremely beautiful places, yeah. Make sure you lodge in your application six months before, right? Six okay. months before the event. That's yep. gonna be, you know, yeah. Yep. That's, That's gonna be happening. enough processing time for immigration. Because we need to understand, you know, they have backlog and they're not putting a hold on people's application to be lodged in, right? So mm -hmm. we have to do things where we're in. I know some people have been waiting for more than that, but I've told you in the start of the video, they are doing things about making it easier. Yes. The solutions by hiring are new stuff, yeah. by waiving requirements. Yeah. They also don't want to be embarrassed with the processing time, right? So mm -hmm. they are working it out. And let's be patient. Let's do what we're supposed to be doing. You know, it's not that the visitor visas will stay so... I mean, in the backlog forever, it's gonna run because we've had it. We've had people that got uh, actually responses within fifteen working days. You know, it has mm -hmm. happened. We've seen it happen. So it's gonna come. People looking forward to visit. Make sure you think about that. 
six minutes, six months before the event comes up, right? So that yeah. you have enough time and it also presents you well at the immigration officer showing that, hey, this person is really organized and giving us enough time to do this. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, and that's a good point because uh, when we started, people just, you know, we see an event that is coming in one month and we take it. I don't think it was fair to the immigration either. You understand? But all these things are learning experiences, very right. good learning experiences. They can tell if you're prepared or you're just, you know, cutting shortcuts. Oh, I thought about this overnight. Hey, let me just jump there. No. So preparation, preparation, preparation. Yeah. So thank you so much, Bruce. I will give you the last you word. So uh, then we'll end the video. Do you have any last word? Or? Absolutely, I do. Okay. Well, I'll, I'll tell a little bit, right? Everybody out there planning to immigrate have two factors. Prayer, that's one. Number two, resilience. I myself, I was denied one, two, three times. Did I give up? No way. The fourth time, fourth time, I was in. What did I do? I prayed. I was resilient. I know what I wanted. Correct. Janet, you've said it. You learn from the mistakes, right? Correct. Correct. And the good time, the good thing, people are here to help you. We're here to help you. Mm -hmm. To mm -hmm. make sure that we iron out all the things that are missing out. To make sure that we make the application so standard. Yes. And are you willing to listen to us? Are you willing to implement that? Let's go for it. Okay. Pray resilience. That's all. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Bruce, for coming here today from all the way from Vancouver and uh, representing uh, and telling people because you're on the ground. Obviously, you know more than we know. Some of us, we can only read about it. We don't have the experience. And thank you so much, the viewer, for coming and giving, giving us the time. I like how Bruce ended resilience and prayer giving up i've also noticed when someone doesn't get the first time it's like you know things have just the world has come to an end no and i've always said this it's about you trying over and over and over again it's not how you fall it's how you stand up in the end okay and right. you know opportunities favor the people who never give up you give up you have no chance you keep going you have a chance some of us when you see us here if you know our stories you will see that we fail so many times but what differentiates the successful from those who are not successful is that resilience, is that the power of just keep going on and knocking those doors and never giving up. So thank you so much, Bruce. I'm sure people are very happy to see you. With time, I will introduce to them to other team members, and they will come and see you maybe on the website and see your picture in the future. Thank you so much Great. for coming, and we hope they'll book a consultation. Janet Rangi. 67 at gmail.com. Okay. Always don't go in the comment section. Just listen to our lips. Listen to what we are saying. This is the mouthpiece. I'm telling you the website. Don't even miss one letter. Don't miss even one number. And also go to janetrangi.com. All those websites, they match together. Thank you so much. And we'll see you guys in the next video. Okay. Thank you. Bye-bye.